So I am a massive Harry Potter fan of both the books and the movies, but there's one thing about the movies that's always irked me. Godric Gryffindor was a wizard born in the 10th century. The problem is his sword it's not from the 10th century, it's actually closer to a ceremonial sword from the 18th or 19th centuries. So that got me thinking, what would Gryffindor's sword look like if it was actually in the style of the 10th century? Now there are arguments that could be made, the, the sword was made by goblins, it was made by Ragnar I, the king of the goblins in the 10th century. You could argue that their design aesthetic was way ahead of its time, but we're gonna just put that to the side and say what would it look like if it was from the 10th century. So with that in mind, let's make a historically accurate Sword of Gryffindor. So this is obviously a project where I get a lot of creative choice with the design aesthetic, but luckily we've got quite a good brief to go on. We've got those parameters already set out of what this sword should be. So we've got our sword of Gryffindor. We have our book reference. Now in our book reference, we have the sword fashioned from pure silver. It has rubies in the handle and these are also described as excised. And we have his name below the hilt. This is our description based on the book reference and then of course we have 10th century swords. So of course focusing on 10th century swords from Europe and from most specifically Britain. Um, these, these notably can be described as Anglo-Saxon or Viking and that's very much the style of sword at the time. Another thing to consider is what I actually want this prop to be. If we're making it look historically accurate is it going to be built historically accurately? Are we going to make it out of metal? Are we going to make it out of plastic? What's it going to be like? Now for this project I do want to make it out of metal. I want this absolutely to be made from metal and steel. So we're going quite realistic with this. With that you also get into design, construction, uh, function, etc. Now obviously in terms of the book reference we're, we're, we're not going to be making it out of pure silver. That is, that is ridiculous and it really wouldn't make a good sword being made out of silver. It would bend Obviously that is a part of the book and a part of the story of it and we can assume that it's magically imbued to be stronger. So to do that we actually will be making it out of steel because that is the strongest thing that us muggles have to make swords out of. And rubies, this is totally plausible. We could make rubies, we could use rubies in the handle but in terms of getting egg sized rubies I don't have that kind of money, you know. <laughs> I really don't. But having said that, I do want to use precious gems, so we're actually going to use a substitute, which are garnets. These are a redstone, which are very close looking to rubies, but are much more affordable and much more readily available to get my hands on. And in terms of being egg sized, this is tricky because it depends on the, the size of the sword and the size of the handle. I will do my best, but we need to start designing before I actually finalize any of those sizes. And finally, the name below the hilt. This, I feel like the movie actually got very, very right. How they have it down the blade. Perfect, I'm going to do my own version of that. So next, we can actually start looking at that design and construction. I actually have this fantastic book, which Alex Steele had in his video uh, when he built his own Viking sword. I do recommend you go and check that out. I'll pop it up here because it's a fantastic build series where he builds a Viking sword, it's really great. But this has a lot of fantastic information on how the swords were built, how they were designed, the sizes of everything, the styling of everything. Pages like this showing the different uh, guard designs, how they varied across time. There's blade shapes and sizes and designs in here. And this is the kind of in-depth research that I've been doing to be able to make sure this sword is what I want it to be. So the basic construction of a Anglo-Saxon slash Viking sword of the 10th century is like this. We have a upper guard, which is actually the one at the top. We have a pommel. We have the lower guard. 
card. And then we have a tang which runs all the way through. And that is our blade down here, which will have a fuller, much like this, as the design. And then on top of this here, we'll have some form of handle to hold it all together. Now, there's also different ways in which the blades were put together. Me, myself, I'm going to have two bolts which come through here. They come through and screw into that pommel, holding it all together. Usually this tang right here will be, there'll be a space for it in there and it'll just be peened over. I need to see about doing that because I'm not sure if there are stones set in the blade whether I'll be able to do that. So that is the basic construction of the saw that I'm going to be making. Next is the design. Now to actually start designing my sword, I actually took to my journal and I wrote out all that information. I extrapolated all the information that I wanted from the book in terms of blade, blade size, different symbols and things I might want on there. So I, I got that all written down and then I just started sketching. Much like I just did for you, I started sketching out different shapes, different ideas, drawing from inspiration online. Started playing with the size. What if the size was a bit different? You know, something like that. And kept going. I, and then I then tried mocking up the whole sword to see what that would look like, just to play with the proportions of the blade and the handle. Even drawing something out to scale, you know, something like that that I could hold. And even refining down to placement and design of the stones in the handle, how many that might be if I were to purchase them, trying to draw some in perspective to see what that might look like. Continuing way on getting things ironed out, working on the specifics of different shapes. If it is a certain shape, would there be facets? Would it be smooth? Working on the construction, how in fact, I would put things together. You can see the detailed drawings there of the construction of how things would be riveted together, different spaces, different shapes and notes, different sizes, just getting my head really into this. And again, working on what the designs might look like if I were to do some uh, etching or engraving and setting those stones in there. Once I had that all down, once I had the, the idea of the construction and the design really embedded in my brain, I decided to jump into the computer and do some more experimentation and design based around those ideas. So this is where I started in Illustrator. I started by roughing in that handle idea and then sketching out the blade. I followed the dimensions from the book and from my research and I got this lovely shape and then even just drew in the fuller here. We had a lovely center line going down there just so I could draw in what I wanted that to look like and then perhaps how long the tang might be. You can see then I moved on to doing many, many iterations. Obviously being here in Illustrator, it's very easy to copy and paste and work on what I wanted to work on and map out different designs very easily, very quickly. So here was my base design that I wanted to work with and I experimented making the handle slightly longer, slightly shorter, making this the lower guard bigger with bigger gems, you know, because the gems in it are, are supposed to be big, but I didn't quite like that. It didn't quite look how I wanted it to. So I went back to just having two gems on the end. Again, working through, making things bigger, making things smaller. And eventually I got to here, I thought, Oh, let's just change up the handle shape a little bit so you can see here we've got a much more elegant shape in the handle and you can see here I was working on top views too just to get everything mapped out in how I would want it to look and again experimenting on different uh, typography there uh, I've yet to decide once we get that I'll probably go with something quite uh, Viking looking like this um, but again here is the design that I pretty much ended up with. I've got these tapered shapes. These guards are going to be made of three different cut pieces and I can cut and shape those separately and then they're going to be held together with these bolts that go all the way through. We're going to have the uh, garnets set in there and so we're going to have to drill and set those. I'm going to have to learn how to set stones which is also going to be very fun. But yeah, that is my final design for my historically accurate sort of Gryffindor. Now the next step was sorting out the blade. Now I am no blacksmith and nor would I ever claim to be uh, at my current skill level, um, but I did want this blade to be made out of steel and I was pretty sure that I wouldn't be able to do it and I wouldn't be able to do it to the degree that I wanted it to be made out of and 
the idea that it would be sprung steel, a proper sword blade. Um, I want this replica to be functional. It's my purpose with this sword is it to be an a perfectly functional sword, but also more like a hero prop. My goal is for this to be like a hero prop you'd get on a movie set. It would be uh, made out of really nice materials, but absolutely pretty much safe for the actors to handle. So I wanted it to look the part, but also be fairly safe. So I reached out to a reenactment sword blade maker. Uh, these guys were fantastic. I went ahead and drew up the blade for them. I used Illustrator. I was designing in Illustrator to scale. So everything that I drew was to scale and I drew up the design exactly as I wanted it. I asked if they could make these with a faux looking edge. So to have the blade come to about one and a half to two mil at the edge and it'll be absolutely not sharp. But also instead of with reenactment, you have a, a very round tip so that you can swing at each other. You're not going to hurt each other. I wanted mine to have that safety edge, but at the tip come to a very nice looking point. Uh, so it actually looks like a real blade and the tip would be the only dangerous part of the blade. So I drew up everything and sent it to them. They said fine, but they said the wait time was 18 to 22 weeks. Yes, weeks. <sighs> But I did say yes, and yeah, I just had to wait. Eighteen to twenty-two weeks later. So actually, eighteen to twenty-two weeks later, I have received these. Look at that! That look. Oh, these are so, these are, look at these. These are fantastic. They were made exactly to those design specs, which I set out and I couldn't be happy with how these are. They are, as I set out to be, they are, they've got a very fine edge, but it's not sharp in the slightest. I can do this. It's never going to cut me. The point is sharp, which actually looks the part, which is what I wanted it to. These are just the perfect start to this project and I can't wait to get cracking on the rest of it. Do join me in the next part where we will continue the historically accurate Sword of Gryffindor. I hope to see you there and until then, take care. Bye bye. This feels so great already. I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be so fun to fling around. Wrong franchise. <laughs> uh <laughs>